Okay, so come into a comfortable seated position. Get your sitting bones connected evenly. Stack up your spine. And then, because we're creatures of habit, switch your legs around so that the other leg is in front or on top. And then just allow, again, yourself to sink down into the sitting bones evenly and lengthen up through the spine. Keep those ribs back a little bit and up so that core is nice and connected, supporting your back as you're seated. Shoulders relaxed away from your ears, as always. You can have your hands palms up on your knees or in your lap, or even at your side if you prefer, just so your shoulders stay relaxed. And then focus on the breathing, drawing in energy and awareness, exhaling, releasing stress and tension. And just take a few moments for that awareness to turn into your yoga frame of reference, remembering personal practice, drawing that awareness into your inner focus as your yoga frame of reference. My allergies are bad today, so if I have to sneeze, I'm going to have to run over and get a tissue. Just warning you. So bring your hands next to you. Palms up, and then just raise them overhead. Stretch up. Keep your shoulders bowed down. And then as you exhale, twist to one side. One hand to the back of, to, back of the hand to the knee, and the other hand to the floor behind you. Stretch up through the spine. Get a good opening so that you can twist a little deeper and exhale into your twist. So hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turning. Don't just turn your neck. So keep lengthening and breathing, exhaling deeper if you like twist. And then lengthen up on a breath in, and as you exhale, just release back to the center. Feel your spine a little more stimulated as we begin. And go ahead, switch your legs around. We'll do that several times as we warm up. So again, everything lengthening and situated correctly. Inhale the arms over your shoulders. Shoulders down, stretch up through the crown. Exhale and twist. So again, hand to the back of the, or back of the hand to the knee, hand behind you to the mat, and stretch your spine from the sitting bones through the crown. Take a breath in and exhale, deepening your twist. So just allow yourself to go as deep as your body wants this morning for your twist. Keep breathing, keep relaxing. And then again, inhale, stretching long, and exhale back to the center. Take a moment there, just focusing on how that feels through your body. And then bring the ribs back and let your body round forward. Tuck your chin in. And then inhale, chest forward and looking up overhead, shoulder blades dropping, a little back bend. And again, exhale, forward bend. Inhale, backward bend. So let the spine move as much as feels good for you, warming things up. And following your breath. And then come back to neutral and switch your legs around again. So one hand to the floor, the other arm out, shoulder level. Palm towards the ceiling, over your shoulder, and slide for that side stretch, lateral motion. Lengthen out through the top of your head and your fingertips. Keep the hip you're leaning away from the sitting bones down. And if you like, keep stretching and sliding, or bring your elbow to the floor if you like extra stretch. And then inhale, sliding back up, and release the arm. And take the other hand down, arm out at shoulder level, palm towards the ceiling, over your shoulder. Push the hand up, slide to the other side, no twisting, remember. You want both shoulders, both hips facing the front. Reach out through the hand, out through the head, and again, keep sliding or bend your elbow and deepen through that hole, lengthening through the ribs. 
And then again, inhaling, come back up and release. Take a moment, just feel your spine and switch your legs again. So focus on the bottom ribs. Keep the spine straight as we start. You can have your hands cupped around your knees and just rotate through the ribs. So the whole upper body doesn't have to move a lot. You want to have that midsection as the focal point for your movement. So just feel like you're making a little circle with your ribs. And then stop and go the opposite way. And just allow that whole midsection to get a little bit more manipulation. And then release and come back up to seated and bring your legs out in front into staff. So we're going to warm the hips up a little bit. So just our usual hip warm up. So knees straight up to the ceiling, toes straight up. So that's that inner roll to the top of the thighs just a little bit if that's working for you to do that. Sitting bones connected, stack up, shoulders right above your hips, and bring one foot up to your thigh and let that knee come down toward the mat. So remember, you want to be sort of to the inside, the front side of your sitting bones. So it's a little pelvic tilt. So if you need to put some padding under, right under the sitting bones to tip your fore, pelvis forward, you can do that and that'll open it a little bit more. Or you can take this extended to the front leg over to the side, which automatically helps you into that slightly forward pelvic position. And that just allows things to release a little bit more through your hips, through your upper thigh area. And just let the knee come down as much as it wants towards the floor. No need to push on it. We don't want to overstress and strain it. We just want to let it release a little of that tension. And then bring the foot up and either hold on or wrap your arms around and pull it in more. But don't crunch your shoulders as you do that. And move the hip back and forth. So hip rotator outside of the hip has fluid in it. We want to warm that up a little bit. So just allow the body to do whatever is good for it and feel it like it's lubricating through that area a little bit. And if you love that and you want it a little more intense, you can raise your shin higher or you can pull it in closer to your body, both of which intensify that hip rotator action. And then release that leg and bring it out to the center. And again, realign and position on your sitting bones. And of course, you'll feel unbalanced, so other side. Bring that opposite foot up. And again, just let the knee come down. You can keep the hand on it, giving it a little extra weight, but don't really push. And again, the knee and toes stay up on your front leg, or you can bring it to the side, or you can Again, pad behind you if this side is tighter. And notice, one side probably is tighter than the other. Why is that? Because we use our bodies habitually. And when we do that, one side tends to be used differently than the other side. And it's not unusual for one side to get much more tense and tight. So just allow your body to release and relax both sides as evenly as you can. And then again, pick up your foot and leg and bring it back and forth a little bit, doing what is appropriate for your hip rotator, a little or a lot. It's just your choice. And again, do it a little bit first with this initial position. And then if you love it and you want more, you can raise it higher and do a little bit more intensely. And when you're done, just bring the leg back out and again, staff position, pressing those feet away. Sitting bones are connected up through the spine, ribs in and up, and then feet coming together into butterfly position. So you can clasp your hands around your feet or you can use your fingers around your big toes and kind of rotate the bottoms of your feet up toward the ceiling, which 
somehow helps to release that inner thigh area and let your knees come maybe a little further toward the mat. Just do what's right for you. Lengthen up through the spine and then bring one hand and the other to the back of your body. Again, just onto the mat, onto the floor close to you. Let your sitting bones evenly sink. Just allow those feet to open as much or as little as they want as those knees come down. And then chest forward and up, bring that heart into focus, allowing your upper body to relax into a little upper body back bend, which again is going to help those legs release a little bit more. And then bring your hands back to the center, lift your knees, and slide them back out to the front. So everything's back realigned. Inner rotation slightly on the thighs, up through the spine. And then we're going to come, of course, into child's pose. So hips onto the heels and just sink forehead toward the floor. So again, knees together, let the lower back get a good stretch or separate your knees and breathe a little bit more easily. So deepen and relax as much as appropriate for you. And then bring your hands out in front and sit up on your heels. And then we're going to come onto our fingertips and just tuck your toes under and then roll back onto the base of your toes. So get everything realigned as you're in this squatting position. So base of the toes are connected. You want to get as much balance as you can. And then push your heels down and stand up or put your hands down, lift your hips and roll up. And come into mountain pose. So as you come to mountain pose, just feel your body. Allow everything to do its alignment. So remember, feet parallel, sitting bones down, ribs in and up, shoulders, shoulder blades down, crown reaching to the ceiling. And inhale, reach your arms out, exhale to your heart, stretch forward, exhale behind, clasp your fingers, lift your heart, and pivot over. So coming into your forward bend, just deepen as much or as little as you want, knees a little bent if you'd like, or straight to stretch your hamstrings more, and tuck in your chin. And then lifting your ribs, slowly wind your way up and into that upper body back bend, pressing your hands toward the mat, keeping those shoulders nice and open. And inhale upright, release your hands, and just take a moment to feel your body. And of course, we'll balance, so do the other side. Arms up, exhale to your heart, stretch to the front, and hands behind you, clasp the opposite leg. Again, lengthen and breathe as you stretch and pivot at your hips, exhaling into your forward bend. Take a moment, relaxing, letting those hands come up and your head down as much or as little as you want. Lift your sitting bones for that back of the body stretch a little bit more if you like it. And again, chin in, unwinding slowly up. And chest toward the ceiling, shoulders down. Inhale upright and release. So we're going to keep the hips and the shoulders facing forward as we do a little bit of warrioring this morning. So we're going to start at the front of the mat. Bring your hands together, prayer position. And keep your shoulders and shoulder blades down. So ribs are in, support your spine, sitting bones, shoulder blades down. And look at your hands and extend them toward the ceiling. Keep looking at your hands and bring them back, lifting your heart coming into a little upper body back bend, as much or as little as your body likes. And then exhaling, follow your hands down and allow yourself to come all the way into ragdoll. Slide your hands up onto your shins, flatten your back, exhale back down, and palms together, and back to standing, and release. And then put your hands on your hips, 
we're going to keep them facing the front, shoulders facing the front, and take a big step back with your right foot. So as you do that, <clears throat> notice that that back foot automatically turns out a little bit. You want to make sure that the knee and the toes go the same direction on that back leg and keep that leg straight. Your hips both should be parallel to the front of your mat or to the front of the room, wherever it's in front of you. And the sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, shoulders facing forward evenly also, warrior one. We're going to bend the knee right above your ankle. Make sure it's aiming toward that second toe, not leaning out toward your little toe or in toward your arch, but straight ahead so that everything stays aligned in that leg. So it's a little, again, rotation inward at the top of the thigh to make sure that that is straight and on point right above your ankle. The more you move this back leg back, the more this thigh bone is parallel to the floor. So the realized position is with that thigh parallel to the floor. It's probably not going to happen. So don't worry if it doesn't. But just check to make sure that that back hip is pulling forward and the right hip or the front hip rather is coming back so that both are even toward the front of your body, of your foot sitting bones down and then bring your arms either out to the side palms up and over your shoulders or sweep them to the front and do that with the palms toward each other and then sink a little bit into your hips straight down not forward or back and lift your heart forward and look up and allow your body to sink evenly into both feet so that back foot has as much weight into it as the front one. So allow your body to sink, breathe, keep your shoulders and shoulder blades down and keep lengthening through the whole spine, through the back of the neck. So don't tip your head back too much. You want to keep lengthening through the neck. And then exhaling, you can bring your hands to your heart or slide them around and down and to your heart. And then push forward into mountain pose and release. So feel your body. Notice how that feels. I'm going to turn around to do the opposite side. So again, you can see it a little bit more. Body facing the front, hips, shoulders, everything even. Hands together. Inhale, reach toward the ceiling. Lift your heart, looking at your thumbs, getting used to that upper body back bend. Exhale, follow your hands down and into ragdoll. Slide the hands up under your knees, flatten your back, get a good halfway up stretch. Exhale back down and palms together. Inhale to your heart. Hands to your hips and that left leg or opposite leg takes a good step back. And again, pull that back hip forward, front hip back, get everything straight toward the front of the mat or whatever is in front of you, shoulders and hips even. Bend your knee, make sure it's going toward your toe, not beyond, remember we don't want to overstrain the knee, and then press way into that back foot so that that heel, pinky toe side of that back foot is really getting a good weight and your knee and toes are going the same direction. Back hip forward, front hip back, shoulders to the front, and either forward and up or out to the side and up, lifting your heart. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, sink into both feet evenly. Breathe, relax. Sink straight down with your hips. Really energize that back leg. Get the weight into both feet evenly. And lift your heart. Keep breathing. Keep lengthening through your neck. And relax. And then bringing your hands down, whichever way is comfortable to your heart. Press the back foot forward and back into mountain pose. So take a moment feeling your body. I'm just turning around because we're going to do the same similar thing once more. So again, find your mountain pose. Straighten everything up. Hands to your heart. 
and looking at your hands, inhale toward the ceiling, pull them back, get that back into its back bend as much or as little as you'd like, and then exhale again, pivoting over and into ragdoll. Slide your hands up, straighten your back, get everything aligned for that halfway up stretch, and exhale back down. Bend your knees if you need, and palms together, inhale, and again to your heart and release. Hands to your hips. And once more, right foot steps back, or whichever is your front foot. Get the knee and toe aligned. Get the hips facing the front. Get the foot situated correctly. Hips and shoulder forward. So make sure that that back hip is coming even with the front hip. And then bending your knee toward the second toe, get it over the ankle and sink straight down. Now this time, instead of lifting our arms overhead, we're going to bring the hands behind and clasp the hands. You can keep the palms or heels of the palms separate, or you can press them together for a little bit more shoulder opening. And then press the hands down toward your knee as you lift your heart and look up. So again, coming into that upper body back bend as you're in your warrior legs. So get that back leg energized, straight knee, front knee right over the ankle. Your body is sinking straight to the floor as you open the chest, heart high to the ceiling. Take a couple breaths. Make sure both feet evenly have weight on them. Make sure your hips are still facing forward that your shoulders are still even. And then rotate your face forward, releasing your hands, and step back into mountain pose at the end of the mat. And take a moment there while I turn around and get ready for the other side. So again, finding your mountain pose, hands to your heart. Sink into your feet evenly. Let everything be aligned toward the front as much as appropriate. Look at your hands, inhale them up, and extend as high as you want. Shoulders, shoulder blades are down, remember, chest is lifting. Bring those hands back, coming further into the back bend if you like it. And again, exhaling and pivoting, coming down into ragdoll. Hands up onto your shins, get that halfway up stretch, lengthening your spine. You can keep your chin tucked in so your neck keeps stretching and your whole sitting bone to crown is stretching apart. Exhale into ragdoll, palms together, inhaling back to mountain pose and moving your hands again to your hips so they stay nice and forward facing. Once more, lengthen up through your spine, sitting bone, shoulder blades down, ribs in, and take that step back for your warrior positioning. The front toes stay straight ahead. Bring that back hip forward so that your shoulders and hips again realign to the front. Once more, you want to sink that knee right over your ankle. Check that it's going toward the second toe, not out to the side or in. That destabilizes. You want your bones supporting you, remember, making yoga effortless. So you don't want your muscles working hard while you're in the position. So make sure your positioning is correct with that hip coming back and the other one forward and your back leg sinking as much as your front foot. And again, Take your hands behind you. Make sure your hips and, face and shoulders are facing front evenly. Clasp the fingers the opposite way from what you did before. There's a habitual way, so just shift them one position over. And then again, push your hands toward your knee and lift your heart toward the ceiling, looking up just slightly so the back of the neck doesn't crunch too much. Sink into both feet evenly. Keep the chest moving forward and up. Keep the hip that's behind you pulling forward while that front hip pulls back so they're even. And just maximize or minimize whatever is appropriate for your warrior this morning. Take another breath or two. Sink into your feet evenly. Check your positioning. Check your breath. And, oh yeah, relax.
And then again, release your hands and step forward into mountain pose. And take a moment there, just feeling your body. More circulation, warriors tend to be very energizing. So you may notice that you're a bit warmer than when we started. Just breathe deep, exhale, and release any tension. And then inhale, bringing your arms overhead, swan dive forward, and pivot into ragdoll. And again, slide your hands up, get that halfway up stretch, lengthening your spine, tuck in your chin, stretch through the sitting bones to the crown, and exhale all the way down into child's pose. So take a moment there, just breathing and relaxing into your forward bend, connecting deep into that surface beneath you, getting reconnected to the floor. And we're going to bring the legs out in front, bring them all the way to the end of the mat. Sitting bones evenly distributing your weight. Again, roll your thighs slightly in, knees and toes up, shoulders and shoulder blades down, chest nice and open. Use your core for support. We're going to roll all the way to the mat. So come all the way down onto the floor and just take a moment there to recline integration. Allow your body to sink into that surface beneath you. To kind of slide your sitting bones slightly toward your heels so your lower back gets a good connection. And bend your knees, bringing your heels up near your hips with the knees straight up toward the ceiling. So take a moment, just positioning and aligning, relaxing shoulder blades down, and bringing your arms out to the side to T position. And I'm losing my microphone. So go ahead and press your back down. Hands are T position, palms up or down, it's your choice. Jam is a little bit more stabilizing. And then with your knees right above your hips, roll your knees to one side while you turn your head to the opposite side. The more you turn your head toward that arm behind you, the more your upper body is in. The more your knees go to the floor, the more your lower body is in the twist. Just maximize or minimize your choice. Keep your shoulders and shoulder blades down. That's your middle back. And then Bring your heels more toward your hips, roll onto your back, press your spine to the floor, and roll the knees to the opposite side. Again, turning your head toward the arm behind you. Maximize or minimize the twist on this side, and you may notice that one side is easier than the other. Just be gentle on both sides, doing what's appropriate for you. And again, Lower body with the knees to the mat, head turning toward the arm behind you, and shoulders and shoulder blades staying down to the floor for your whole spine moving into the twist. Take a breath, exhale, and just deepen as much in your twist as you want. And then to release again, heels toward your hips slightly as you roll back onto your back and bring your feet to the mat. Slide them out into corpse position with your hands, palms up near your side, letting your shoulders and shoulder blades sink into the floor and your body relax a little bit more. You can roll those thighs toward each other for that knee and toes up toward the ceiling, or you can let them relax a little bit more, however is more comfortable. Again, just allow your body to sink, relaxing into that surface beneath you deepening into that earth embrace. Deep breaths in, just allow the breath to go all the way to your toes, your legs, your hips. So tighten that area of your lower body just a little bit, hold it for a breath or two, and then release. 
let your whole lower body really relax. So as warriors tend to be a little bit tensing and tightening there. Same thing for that mid torso and chest. Just take a breath into your upper body. Really tense and tighten it. Even your arms and hands and fingers. And then let that go and just sink. Letting your whole upper body relax. Scrunch your face, tighten it, clench your jaw, make your whole upper upper face area, head area, jaw and neck as tense and tight as you can. And again, on an exhalation, just release. And allow your body to sink, softening into that surface beneath you, melting, letting all that warrior tension release. And with deep breaths, just exhale deeper into the earth and embrace, letting your body go. And as you release awareness of your body, just allow those other thoughts coming to your mind to release as well. Just let them drift in and out without attention. They keep forming. But it's your choice if you pay attention. And right now, there's no need to think of the past, anticipate the future, or pay attention to anything anywhere outside of your breath. So let your breath deepen. Let your thoughts flow in and out without attention. And let your body sink deep into that peace, filling your body with peace your mind with peace, your entire being becoming peace. And probably this morning, that relaxation feels really good. So if you want to stay relaxing, feel free to do that. But if you need to re-energize, just bring the energy and awareness back to the moment, to your body, to the room. And begin moving gently, allowing yourself to get a good stretch if you need it. And then pressing your back down, bending your knees, draw your heels in. And pull your knees toward your heart, giving yourself a good wrapped around hug, appreciating your yoga work this morning and the work your body does for you every day. And releasing that, rolling to the side, come back to your preparatory seated position for preparing for the rest of your day. So thanks for joining me this morning. Hope you're energized by the warriors and relaxed by our meditative relaxation. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me today. 